All right, let us continue. Let's continue as we were. Okay, so thirdly, it was the observing, the observing of the law. And that is to say, that is to say, let's just put this right here. That's the Torah or the Orit. You can see that that's the Orit, Torah or the Orit, right? Then uh, fourthly, the fourth matter is what we call before the B and the C, the blessings and the curses. The fifth matter is the exhortation to obedience, and we call it the obed, for sure, obed, you know, like abid, like abid, which means slave or servant. Now, we've been a slave and a servant to man under the curses for um, disobedience, and now we need to come into being servants or in the obedience to the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So this is very, this is very important. So this is Begabahim Gizeh, or when you enter in, when you become in to the land. Now we was at the first point of the first fruits, right? We was at the point of first fruits and going through what the instructions were according to Deuteronomy chapter 26 for first fruit. So now let's catch up with this and this is now to speak on Abraham, on Father Abraham. Now there's a blessing or rather there's a there's a recitation of an acknowledgement. Now even when we utilize the the, the fruit of the tree, you understand, which is our sacrament, you understand, and a sacramental, the cannabosum, and the sacramental use. We also have to remember that there is a blessing or a, there's an authorization for the use thereof. Now, even the mental ascent of that authorization, it prevents the abuse of it, especially when that authorization is recited, which is a very key thing. Now, in the first fruits, which we have likened to the whole tap, or what one can call from an ancient Egyptian reconstruction, which is necessary to really understand what is going on here in the biblical matter. In the biblical matter, we have to understand the context of it. And with that understanding, we also begin to understand the racial aspects to it as well as it relates to us in the half of the story concerning us which hasn't been told until now. So this is also very significant. As we mentioned before and we'll mention again there are some key documentation that we need to understand this portion especially with the blessings or the um, the first fruits and what is said upon offering that first fruit. Now, this is from Babylon to Timbuktu, right? From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor, right? From Babylon to Timbuktu. Very important work, a history of the ancient black races, including the black Hebrews. It's inclusive of we as black Hebrews. And that's his first book. Then the follow-up book is this book right here, or the Valley of the Dry Bones, the conditions that face black people in America, which we find this book to be even prophetic, considering the present time, considering what we are experiencing and the signs of the present time. Then we noted this book that we were able to um, publish and this is our late earthly father's work, which one part of it, as we mentioned before, was published in Mohammed Speaks. And this is called um, The Biblical Antiquities of the Black or the Hamitic Race. Because, see, if you don't understand these, these particular books right here, or at least the knowledge and the relativity to we as black people of these particular 
three particular books. They go in a kind of a set, especially with this one being a good foundational one, coupled with this, the biblical antiquities of the black race, and then bringing it to the fulfillment in the present time, now bringing it up to date in this book, then one would not be able to understand, well, what in the world is meant when Father Abraham in verses 5 to 10 says, and thou, when it says, and thou shall speak and say before Yahweh, thy God, thy singular male, Eloheka, or Amlaka Egezi Aviher, you understand? To say before the sustainer, a Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous. This is what we're to say when we enter into the land. Now this is what was said with the Israelites now coming out of Egypt, of that particular Egypt. And we're doing a reconstruction, an Ethiopic reconstruction of ancient Egypt and the Exodus. And it's, it, honestly, it's been very interesting to I. And, I. and I knew that much was suppressed. But actually getting into the matter, it also proves the truth racial aspects and the real exodus and one of the reasons why there's so much this debate concerning the real exodus is that when we start to narrow down the dates and the time and, and the story and put it and merge the monuments and, and the record from Egypt with the Bible, we find black people. So we suspect the reason why there is still this controversy among Europeans and some European scholars and the confusion is because they recognize and realize too that black people that they could not show you certain monumental things because if they did show you these things and put the story together and some of them actually came very close There's another book that we produced or have published again um, the society Lanju society and yours truly in a Rasia Dinos Tefari um, in a name is um, Egypt's Israel's debt to Egypt uh, a work called Israel's Debt to Egypt is a very, very interesting work by Edward um, Sugden. And what we've done is updated it and brought it forward again. And that's also available at www.lojsociety.org. That's a very important work as well because that also further demonstrates our ancient half of the story, the half of the story that, doesn't, that they don't tell us or don't want us to know. We as a so-called lost sheep as this black people in the Americas and the Caribbean, who we are, going past so-called slavery. You understand? This is why when we point out this particular book from Babylon to Timbuktu is very important because it shows that we, our ancestors, been all over the place. We came from Babylon all the way far furthest, almost one of the furthest points east to one of the furthest points west, you understand, in that Afro-Asian region of the world. So when the earlier teachers like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke about the Asiatic black man, you understand, remember a lot of this knowledge has come out in increments and, and a little bit here, a little bit there, and um, much of it was not available to many of our ancestors, but many of our ancestors, they did preserve by writing and, 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 and leaving testimonies like this and others for us, as well as this book, which is not part of this particular, I would say, direct series of books that we mentioned, but it's still an important book right here. This is by um, Dr. Ben, you understand, We the Black Jews, which also gives a certain um, perspective of it. Now, some of the things... We are a little bit critical, but it's not because the author, we think, was intending to deceive some things concerning the reality of the biblical story. But many of the teachers had to first confront white supremacy or the Gentile rewrite of history. And many are still confronting that. Even ourselves have to confront that. Because when we say that Abraham was a black Syrian or a Syrian, you understand, or Osirian, Osar, like Osiris and the Syrian, but all that is related. All that is, it may seem just a play on words to some, but when we now present the evidence behind the words, then ones will have to either admit or bring forth their own 
um, their own witnesses. Bring forth your witnesses or admit what we're saying is true. Many will just say, no, that's wrong. You're just saying, that. well, bring forth your witnesses. No, to bring forth your evidence. We're presenting our evidence. And it's heavy, heavy evidence that we're presenting. So here on the, on the Israelitish hotep or hetep first fruits offering, we present this first fruit and we say that a Syrian ready to perish was my father, my forefather. He went down into Egypt and became, I mean, went into, down into Egypt, excuse me, and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Now, this has all been proven, and Rekemez, I think uh, one of the uh, ironic workers, laborers, had a tune, his name was Rekemez, or Rekemez, you understand? And in his tune, he shows one of the few periods in Egypt where they work with the very same kind of brick-making um, system as the Bible, and when you see the images, it shows black people. Yeah, I mean, it clearly shows, shows, shows black people. So that proves that if the Exodus is correct in the story of Musa, and you want evidence, well, there's your evidence. But some racially dismissing that say, no, that, that's just how the Egyptians work. That's no, nothing particular. But that has been studied. And it's been found that this is one of the few periods known where this happened. And in the same time frame do we find that through our Ethiopic reconstruction we can see ancient Egypt and the Exodus clearly right there. But now between these two verses, five and six, there's some time-space difference. There's a time space. It's one talking about Abraham, you understand, and then it is speaking about Abraham and his descendants who would return to Egypt with Joseph and with Jacob, you know, and up to the Mosaic time. And now during this latter period, it was then that the quote Egyptians. Now we have to understand what it means by the Egyptians, because we're not talking about the, the, the so much the native. You understand that the native rulers of Egypt have gone through a period of time that's called the Hyksos, or the Hekshus period of time. But when we present the reconstruction, then one can at least see more clearly what we're speaking about. But the Assyrian aspect, there's a couple of websites out there that have archaeological pictures, many of them that have been put to the back of the book or suppressed, that basically shows an earlier black influence in Assyria and in that far east region. Here's where it ties with Namrud or Nimrod, who has been made the big black, bad black boogeyman and associated with a lot of evil intent from the so-called very beginning. But concerning Nimrod, he wasn't this big bad boogeyman. He had a job. He had a mission. Now, it appears, based on the evidence, that Nimrod's earlier days was better than his latter days. In other words, in his earlier days, it seems as though he was a victim of this same reptilian conspiracy coming out of the East that he was sent from the Ethiopic or God's empire that was in the Ethiopia or Africa region to suppress that. Now, in the latter period of time, we have Abraham coming out. Now, what's important about Abraham is this, that according to the Ethiopic book of Adam and, and Eve, uh, Adam where Haywan, I think the whole name is Adam and Eve's um, conflict with Satan, which is known as the ancient uh, uh, scripture, and it's preserved in the Ethiopic, and was translated by Caesar, uh, I think Marlin or um, Marlin or something like that, Marlin or Marlin, something like that. But we'll bring that all forward as well. But we were studying that, and in that particular testament, it basically shows and demonstrates something very interesting. It says that that um, Abraham or the Abraham's family somehow were married into, you understand, a, 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 a relation. I don't want to say exactly what she was right now, because I don't exactly recall, but when I saw the connection between the bloodline of Nimrod and the bloodline of Abraham, that was interesting. So the story there that we get of Abraham, a lot of this story of, of Abraham and then also the story of Nimrod and, and the demonization of Nimrod and the, using him as a New World Order kind of type. What we're dealing with today is based on what happened in yesterday. 
And if we don't understand today, really, in order to overcome it, then we need to return to yesterday because that puts the whole matter and this whole story in its context. So we as the Beta Israel really need to, 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 to recognize this. Now, give us a one moment, and we're going to return to the next part of this. So stay tuned. Shalom. Arastafari.